Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting mm, rare and exotic whiskeys. And today I have a Glenlivet, a 13 year old, ooh, single malt scotch whiskey, first fill American oak, very, very nice. Matured and first fill American oak casks to give a sublime sweetness to the fruity Glenlivet style. France exclusive. So, my little problem with here is um, it's in 10 different stores online by Whiskey Base. That is then um, Whiskey Base 199408. And um, eight of those are in Germany. Only one shop is in France that has it at the moment. And the other shop is the Whiskey Base. No, it's Drank Duzin um, in the Netherlands. Hmm. All right, so what am I going to compare it to? I'm going to compare it to something else from the Glenlivet. It's their 12-year-old. Now, this is their licensed dram. I just recently did a video about this. This is 48%. This is 40%. Both of these have no um, information at all on the bottle or on um, the, the box about non-chilled filtered or about artificial coloring, unfortunately. So I'm going to assume both. Now, this is 48%, this is 40%, which means this has 20% more alcohol. 40%, 10% would be 4, double that is then 8, and that's 20%. That's a lot. So, and the thing is, you can get both of these bottles over here in Germany for 40 euros, 39.90. So, 40 euros, 40 euros, what do you buy? The 13-year-old or the 12-year-old? The 48% or the 40%? The first fill American oak or, and I'm going to actually now read from the label here. Yeah, the label says the limited edition Glenlivet whiskey from first fill casks tell the story of our founder's pioneering vision. All right, so color. Well, they're both probably colored, so. Um, there, at least this is probably chill filtered. This might be as well. So what we have over here are first fill ex bourbon casks. Over here we have first fill ex bourbon and first fill European. Now I don't know what does that mean. First fill casks. Does that mean first fill casks, as in nothing was in there before? So it'd be first fill American virgin oak and first fill um, European oak. I always have my problem with first fill casks. Yeah, I think Canada does it great. Um, they will take, for example, um, a bourbon barrel that's been used once, and then they actually use it up in Canada. And then it was in Canada, it was a first fill bourbon. And then they call it a Canadian whiskey barrel. And I don't know if anyone's called it a first fill Canadian whiskey barrel, but <laughs> why not? It's the first time um, anything has been in there um, that was not Canadian whiskey. So um, I sometimes think that we need to work on our wording with our casks sometimes. Just me. Just saying. Don't like it sometimes. Yeah, first fill means second fill. All right, don't forget. Now, 40%, 48% nose. I like this nose. This is honey. This has a lo little bit of a candied orange peel moment going on here. And on top of that, I get a tiny, tiny little bit of a, like a rose petal moment. A very gentle, fruity uh, pears. I get pears. I get um, stewed pears in here. So canned pears for me. My grandmother used to do that. So pears, honey, rose petals, and maybe marzipan and a little bit of that orange candied moment over here and that's the weirdest part about that is the difference between the two just the american oak and then the addition of the european oak the very first time i smelled this i was like wait a second i think i remember having that very similar smell with a red breast red breast also uses that combination of american and that uh european oak and a little bit of that spice does come through on that. Now on the nose, if I were to choose the two of these, I would prefer this. Now, um, this is good, but I prefer that. Now, a tiny little excourse. Let's remember the first time we bought a bottle of whiskey. 
probably you bought it at a, in Europe, we can buy them at a grocery store. So beside the wine aisle, we have a spirits aisle, and we can actually go there and buy our alcohol. And so you go in there and you find something with probably 40 some percent. Probably 40. And it might have cost less than $50. So it might have had an age statement, might not have. So this would be a typical thing that maybe in France you'll find in a supermarket. Hey, Glenlivet, ooh, special edition, 13 years old, very, very nice, go for it. Now in America, you go to a liquor store, you buy it there, and you um, probably also at the beginning started off with things that had less than 40%. Most of your gins, a lot of 40, less than 40%. Most of your rums, less than 40%. All the other spirits out there, less than 40%. Only when we advance in our development of our palate and the enjoyment of the whiskey do we start thinking about things like cast strength, single cast whiskeys. Ah, the pinnacle, the SMWS type of things and so on. Normal people, and most people don't develop that far. I'm going to say that's going to be, of the people who drink spirits, it's going to be 10, 15% are actually into whiskey. And of that, let's say 15%, maybe about 1% to 3% max actually make it up to that single gas gas strength. Now, but of those people that are there, those are the people who watch my videos a lot of the times. And I have to remind myself and us, there's absolutely a majority of the people out there that say, maybe not you, maybe not me, but the majority of the people out there say 40% is enough. It's the regulation almost everywhere on the planet. Whiskey has 40%. Forget about Australia. Shh. But the rest of the world has 40%. South Africa says 43%. Interesting enough. Yeah, 40% whiskey is not whiskey. Hmm. But most of the world says 40%. And so this is absolutely, for us in Europe, a more than adequate whiskey. It's got a great age statement. Hey, where do you find 13 years of age? I mean... There's a Kregalchi that has it, but other than that, very, very seldom. And everything else is 10, 12, and a lot of things are new age statements. So, would we like to have more? The geeks, yes. The people who are entering into the whiskey world, probably not. Would we like to have natural color? Of course we would. But, hey, this whiskey probably wasn't made for us. Would we like to have non-chilled filtration, especially here, 48%? Of course. Put it on the bo bottle. Um... Chavez Brothers, or um, Pinot Ricard. We would love that. But hey, French company, French product, French, France exclusive. So now don't forget when we see a product like this, it might not be for us. Geeks. But it will be for a certain percentage of the whiskey community that actually prefers this. And Glenlivet has a great name, Glenfiddich, Glenlivet. Those are the two products we usually interact with at the beginning. I'm Yes, I'm ignoring our Jim Beams, our Jack Daniels, and our Johnny Walkers. But hey, that's usually what we have. And so I must admit, well done, first fill, 13 years of age, 40 euros, 40%. I can't complain. Now, as I said, on the nose, I like this a lot. On the nose... This has a little bit less of the sweetness, has a tiny little bit more of that European oak complexity going on there. Still, I would gravitate to this. Cheers. Mm. I like this whiskey. The aftertaste, it has, and this is my problem that I have with the whiskey at the moment, it has that old barrel, used barrel taste. What do I mean by that? I mean by that usually I would bring an association that wood tannin moment, a little bit of an old used barrel taste. It's not. First fill. First fill American oak. First fill American oak. So... First fill American oak, not bourbon, first fill American oak. Um, and it went a little bit past the tipping point for me. There's that pepper tannin moment going on here. Now, I've had 
my fair share of bourbons. Let's just go to Elijah Craig, 12-year-old, bottled and bond. Bottled and bond, I'm sorry, um, barrel-proof bottle of wow. I do not get that woody, woody moment. I have had some George T. Stag. I get chewing on the wood. Um, but usually up to 12 years of age, if done properly, that doesn't really, really affect me that much. This kind of... Yeah, yeah. This is a definite C whiskey. It's good. Value for money? Ah, C minus. So A, why haven't you bought it? B, buy it. C, you can buy it if you want. D, you don't need to buy it. You can buy it if you want. F, why was this stuff even made? <sighs> now, C minus... It's one of those things. It's like, all right, I can get a Glenlivet 12-year-old for half the price sometimes in some countries. At least a third of the price. Why do I pay that much more of a up-market pricing just for those first fill American oak cask, just for that one extra year when I still only get the 40%? Now, some of us are going to say, but Jason, just go out and find a licensed dram from Glenlivet. This is 48%. This is exactly what we geeks want. And then I say, why not? And I take a, di I take a little sip. Mm -hmm. That oakiness of that European oak kicks in. And then it just, I do not like the finish of this whiskey. There's that peppery bitterness here of really oaky, not goodness. And it's overpowering that finish. Now, in my mouth, I have a whiskey for 10, 20 seconds. On the palate, afterwards, I have it between 20 seconds and two minutes, maybe three, four or five. And that feeling, that flavor, that profile that I have, that echo that happens after I swallow. It's just something I don't want. What I do want is this instead. And very interesting, when I go back to this from the 48%, I get a creamier, mouth-filling moment here, which is counterintuitive. 40% should be watery. 48% should be better, 20%. And it's not, in my personal opinion, what I would prefer. If I were to pick one of these two, this would be the one I'd pick all day long. Now, um, if I were to pick something and say, all right, good. Now, there's a, a lot of different Glenlivets out there over the years, and which Glenlivet would you try? Um, there's something called Glen, Glenlivet, got, oh, there was something called Glenlivet Nadura. Nadura, Spanish, natural. And um, these were cast strength. They were unpeated and peated versions out there. Some of them are bourbon. Some of them were sherry. Some of them were awesome. Yeah, if you can find an old dusty of a Nodora from Glenlivet, buy it. If it's under 80 euros, dollars, whatever, it's something I can recommend. Now, if I only have 40 dollars, 40 euros, 40 um, pounds, um, what I'm going to go for is, to be very, very honest, where's my glass? There it is is this, and you want an H statement. Is it Scottish? No. Is it delicious? Is it very good? Yes. It's a Bushmills 10-year-old. 40%, 40%. What we have here is triple distilled. We have our um, bourbon and Oloroso sherry uh, maturation. How many times have the bourbon casks and how many times have the sherry casks been used? Are they first filled? No. Majority, no. Are they second filled? Maybe. Are they third filled? Probably. But yet, most of the batches of the um, Bushmills 10 years old I've had are absolutely fine. I had one batch, eh, but I've had most of the batches have been much, much better. And this actually tastes better than that. And I'm paying under 30 euros for this. 30, 40. So, mm. Mm. single malt, single malt, 100% malted barley. Um, triple distilled pot stills, double distilled pot stills. 48%, 40, 40%. Age statements 10, 12, 13. Oh, 10, 12, 13. Mm. And it has a wonderful aftertaste. That's something that just lingers on your palate, which is very, very, very nice. 
this I don't like, this acceptable. All right, so my question of the day is what Glenlivet would you buy if you could find it? And second of all, if you only had 40 euros or less and you wanted an age statement, which product would you find out there? I've had some pretty good answers out there. One of the best ones we can find over in Europe, um, it's right at that 40 um, euro mark at the moment, is Glen Tatum, 10 year old. Still one of those secret, under the radar type of whiskeys that many people don't talk about. Thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, tell others, share this video, and hope to see you back here real soon. Whiskey Jason, bye bye. Thank you.